Well, here we are on a lovely Monday morning, balmy, I think you would call it, uh, high temperatures, sun streaming in the window. How, are, how is the weather like with you, Pat? It's, it's actually a lovely morning. The sun's shining here. Uh, <laughs> it's a very I'm, nice morning. I've been ironic because the rain is pounding down outside the window. Uh, no, no. The sun, I, I actually, I'm not kidding. And I'm not being ironic. <laughs> hey, the right, actually uh, shining here. I, I assumed that you would be having the same weather as us. Ah, typical. It's discrimination. Discrimination against the no, people from the six counties. From, okay, Pat, six, uh, we have so much to talk about. Um, and we have to tread carefully, uh, owing to not wanting to wind up in a prison cell or bankrupt and selling our house. As right. the world and his mother now knows, uh, Jeffrey Donaldson has been charged with uh, rape and other sexual offences in the distant past and has disappeared off the face of the earth. Nobody knows where he is. He's not... At, his home in, I think it's Lisbon he lives in, uh, and he's not in his home uh, flat that he has in London, and uh, nobody knows where he is. And it's a, a, a serious blow to, to unionism, I think. But let me just get this point first of all. He's accused of these crimes. Everybody, and the effect of it will be as if he had committed those crimes. And everybody assumes that, I mean, people are talking on social media as so though this man had done these things. I think that is outrageous because you, you can say anything you want about anybody, but that doesn't mean it's so. I mean, if I was to start saying things about you, that you did this and you did that and you did the other thing, would people accept it? They'd say, how do you know that? But with mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jeffrey Donaldson and the sexual crimes, a lot of people on social media are acting as if they, in fact, were absolutely true. And that's going to be how it's going to be received within uh, politics, because he's finished the, 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 the thing about it, The thing about it is, and I, that's why I'm, I'm glad you said what you said, because the bottom line of it is, it's not up for me or you or anyone else. It's only in a court of law where all evidence yes. and all sides are here and a, and a judge and jury decides. So I am making no judgment whatsoever yeah. about yeah. Jeffrey being innocent, guilty or anything in between. But well, the, well, the I would say, is, I would say uh, simply he is innocent. He is innocent. Yeah, no. And uh, with regard to victims, there are no victims. Right now, there are no victims and Jeffrey is innocent. Now, events mm. may prove that Jeremy Jeffrey is guilty and that there are victims. But yes. as things stand, there are no, uh, he is innocent and they, there are no victims. There are alleged victims. Aye, but, it, it, aye, but it's, it's up to a court. Our, 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 what we're here to discuss is the big political situation and yes. the fallout from it. Uh, Dude, uh, let's exactly. get all of that, somebody. Exactly. Because, as you so, say, uh, it's, it's up to, uh, it, it is amazing the number of people who are uh, making decisions on social media, but that's not anything to do with us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. bottom line, of it all, Jude, right, here's the thing. On Friday morning, myself and yourself had just done our Friday prog podcast. <laughs> and I should, I, I was getting a couple of, I, I could hear when I, me and you were chatting, messages coming on my phone. And I didn't cop on and I didn't look at them. Well, you can't really look at your phone while you're trying to chat to you. You're taking yeah. up too much of your time. But the <laughs> bottom line of it all is when I was finished, I looked and there was my son saying, Dad, he says, there's something big going down. And uh, Jeffrey Donaldson's apparently been arrested and the DUP are holding an emergency meeting and apparently he's resigned and all this. And I said, ah, you're taking, you know, the proverbial here. Anyway, I turned on the uh, um, the TV I know Gareth Gordon from uh, BBC, yes, mm -hmm. who's normally very good and uh, oh, nice I uh, thoroughly nice enjoy him. You know, uh, and he turned around to, uh, and he said on air, he's, I don't know, he sort of, he was nearly flummoxed. He said, I don't know what to say here. He says, uh, he says as thunderbolts go, he says, this is the, uh, the biggest thunderbolt I've come across in a very long time. He <laughs> says, yeah. You know, and he then confirmed that, that Sir Jeffrey had indeed resigned as leader of the DEP, that the DEP were, were in the middle of an emergency meeting. And that, you know, dude, I have never seen anything like that in my life. You know, like me and you were sitting with the last thing if, if somebody had asked you or me on when we were doing our podcast on Friday morning, that before we would be finished, Sir Jeffrey Donaldson would be arrested and uh, resigned as leader of the DUP. I would say you could have got an odds of a million to one that me or you would have predicted that. That's right. I was out, I was out for a jog and uh, I, I had my headphones on, listening to music as I ran as I tottered up the road. And my son, from one of my sons from London, uh, phoned me and I uh, was able to take the call on the headphones. And he said, uh, you know, the, the, the Jeffrey Donaldson has just blanked all his social media accounts. 
Uh, and there's all sorts of things being said here. Get back home as quick as you can and, and start writing yeah. about it. Uh, it was a, it really was a, a thunderbolt. I, I think it was a double thunderbolt, uh, Pat, because we're only recovering from the impact of Leo's resignation. You know, nobody saw that coming. Everybody says of Leo, nobody saw that one coming. And then we're saying yeah, uh, yeah. two weeks later, we're saying even, no, even, even, Michal, even, Michal Martin, even Michal Martin said that he had been talking to him the previous week and not or a couple of days and not and not as much as a hunt. And uh -huh. then he says after the cabinet meeting of one per, that particular day, he said to him and Ryan and um, Martin, could you stay on a couple of minutes? And he informed them that he was resigning. And, and yeah. you know, so yeah. we're getting we're getting a lot of churn politically on the island of Ireland. Oh, that's right. And but Grace, just, here's the thing. Now, yeah. Excuse me. I was listening uh, just a wee bit this morning because I was on and out. Uh, but apparently, uh, I think it was Amanda Ferguson was on RT this morning. Yes. And she's saying the implications uh, could be quite serious. That this, uh, well, a lot of people are saying it. Basically, uh, Sir Geoffrey was the one who got the deal over the line, the winter frame, yes. and got assemblies yeah. uh, restored. Mm -hmm. Gavin Robinson, apparently of the same school. But there are others and, uh, who are opposed to it. So, Jude, in your opinion, what are the implications now? Is is it likely, you know, if there's a contest for leadership and say someone of the Nay school gets uh, into leadership, uh, I know, what happens then? If that happens, I think unionism will have inflicted a self-inflicted uh, wound, which will be a wound, mm -hmm. could even be a fatal one. I mean, at present, they're in very, very bad shape. And if they, they elect right. a hardliner, I don't see them electing a hardliner, actually. But if they do, if they replace Jeffrey with a hardliner, I think there'll be an awful lot of people who are presently in the softer end, sort of the Jeffrey end or beyond of yeah. the DUP, who will just sh shuffle over to the Alliance Party. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, mean, I agree with you totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Je Jeffrey is, is, I mean, he's not the he's not the answer to all liberals' prayers, but at the same time. He there was something about him. He was he he had a certain civility of manner, and uh, yeah. he 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 worked hard. You got the feeling he's working hard, uh, but you know it's it's just I I really I I here's here's here's, here's the person I think is going to get it. I think it's going to be Emma Little Pengelly. That would fit very mm -hmm. neatly. You see, there was a lot of talk about should Jeffrey become an MLA and give up his MP job. Uh, Emma Little Pengelly, you see, uh, could be put in place as the leader, and that would enhance her chances, I think, of being elected come any uh, fresh election for the North. Um, yeah. What would you think of that, Pat? Would you think of that as a bit of a yeah, well, you, you know, I always sometimes, um, or not always, uh, you sometimes watch the uh, reaction. Apparently, the, um, the fact that Emma Little Pengelly and Michelle O'Neill are getting on so well as uh, annoying some of the hardliners, which I think, Jesus, what do they want? They want bad relations. Would uh, they not uh, prefer uh, good relations? They do. Whatever they that. do. That's yeah. what they do. They do want that. They want yeah. purity. They want purity. Do not come out from among them, as the Bible says, you know? Uh, so there's that. A little, a little Pengelly, in fairness, to her, doesn't seem to have put a foot wrong so far. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, the last I heard, and it's only, you know, only. Apparently, about eighty percent of unionism want the assembly back and are happy that it is back. So I, I take your point totally. If the DUP elect a hardliner who posts, tries to bring down the assembly, I think uh, uh, there'll be a serious uh, split in the DUP vote, and the moderates who seem to be in the majority of them will simply peel away mm -hmm. and join the, either the UUP or the Alliance, uh -huh. and that that's that's going to weaken um, unionism even more. And the other, the other thing as well, like there's all sorts of uh, uh, apparently people like Bryson. Uh, I see the or I'm going to say the or you see the PSNA vice statement. I I think they were well. I don't know. I'll, I'll apologise if I'm wrong, but I think he was asking when did the police know about uh, uh, these all these investigations? Yeah. Or when were all these investigations into Jeffrey be, begun? I think the implication or the there was a conspiracy theory. Was he leaned on to sort of uh, make a deal because this was hanging over him? Or it's all this crap. But the bottom, the police issued a statement yesterday saying the the complaints against the Jeffrey were only made in early March, and the the Windsor deal was done before then, and the agreement was done before then. So I presume they issued the statement to sort of knock off 
uh, head off the, um, all the conspiracy theories at the past uh, and so on. So the mm. bottom line of it all is, dude, we don't know where we're going from here. Uh, it could be very destabilizing. And the whole thing about where you know the future of you know after I, I mean, to to follow on or to conclude, I think if the uh, assembly goes down this time, it ain't ever coming oh, back up. I think not a chance, not a chance of it surviving if it does go down. Um, I I was just thinking. Um, I wonder if the fact that uh, the DUP has always had a kind of a connection. Well, it has had a connection with the religion. Uh, uh, the person who founded the DUP was also the person who founded the Free Presbyterian Church, uh, Ian Paisley. Uh, so there's yeah. that sort of thread of morality and upright living attached to the DUP. Yeah. But for something like this to even be charged somehow makes it all all the more shocking. Um, mm. I, I I really don't know where to go with it, Pat. I I I I would be pretty pessimistic, to be honest with you. I, I, it's hard yeah. to think. It's hard to think of somebody being uh, as equally reasonable as uh, Jeffrey was. Now that, that's reasonable within quotation marks, because yeah. I've read reports of people. Now I'm not sure if it was a journalist himself in a column or whether it was some of the hardliners in the DUP, but who were critical. <laughs> Get this: were critical of Emma Little Pengelly doing that little um, stint of learning to play Hurley. <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. I, I mean, yeah. where do you go from there? What do you do with people like that who say, you know, oh, you're contaminated, you went in and you lifted a hurling stick and, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that's the end of you. Uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, you, you sort of lose faith. You sort of go, good God, see tomorrow morning, because uh, uh, she uh, um, did a wee bit of camogie, and she suddenly become a vegan. <laughs> yeah. One of the things about this is, was the timing good for um, the DUP, for Jeffrey's wing of the DUP, or was it bad? Uh, could it have been emerged? Could it have emerged at another time? Because I, I, I'm guessing it could have, because we're told the events happened in the past. Uh, and yeah. did did the revelation of it at this stage uh, was there any any sort of a meaning attached to it? Was it seen as an effort to a damage Jeffrey or the DUP as much as possible, or was it to somehow limit it? What I mean, was it a bad time to release good uh, bad news? No, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I, I don't. Anybody had, had much control of it after after girls or uh, the uh, the alleged victims, and mm. I'm I'm not being pejorative there. Yeah. If they only came to the police at the start of March. And uh, now the uh, whatever subsequent uh, proceedings uh, uh, have been instituted have been instituted. Mm. Uh, I presume, should after two years the uh, assembly been down, uh, I only know a couple of people of the unions community uh, reasonably well, and well, two or three of them. I said they're delighted to see the assembly back up and running, uh, uh, uh. and I think that, uh, and I think most reasonable unionists don't want it down, because I think they know more than or better than we do. Jim, yeah. the next time the assembly goes down, mm -hmm. as I said earlier, it ain't coming back. But it's yeah. not, uh, that's to the advantage, the considerable advantage of the nationalist community, not the unionist community, uh, because we can only go one way then. Yeah, the DUP have always been a devolution party. They've been very keen on it, yeah. uh, despite the fact that they didn't sign up to a Good Friday Agreement. But they really have been in favour. I suppose, naturally, I mean, it sort of follows, like, wouldn't you? Like to be doing the job yourself rather than somebody coming over from England. But your sure, Paisley's uh, Martin McGinnis claimed that the first thing, uh, and he said it, uh, he said it to me, and I know he said it to other people. Apparently, the first thing that uh, Paisley said to him when they closed the doors and the civil servants had left, he says, "You know, Martin, we can make a do a better place uh, uh, of running this, our better job." Sorry, let me say that again, a better job of running this place than the Englishman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so he was a devolutionist. Yeah, I. I, I... You needn't answer this one, Pat, and then we'll move on. But uh, I, one of the things that I was getting into bother on was uh, on social media, because uh, these events occurred a long time ago, and I was wondering who decided that was it the victims only came forward very recently, or was it something that the victims had come forward earlier and that uh, you know the it was uh, kept under wraps until it was absolutely necessary for the authorities, the, the PSNA to charge Jeffrey. Um, see, it baffles me. If these things happened a long time ago, why 
the explanation I've been given is that people feel somehow it's their fault, the victims that is, they feel it's their fault that they were in, uh, that this happened. I I just don't get that. You know, if a woman, say, for example, is raped, they have very idea that that woman would somehow be, you know, in some way responsible for it. It's like this thing where they say, oh, you're wearing a short skirt. What the hell? I mean, what the hell? These people are mm. victims. So I, I yeah. just... I don't. I I'm just. Dude, I, I can't answer that. I genuinely don't know. Mm. Uh, it, it, like, uh, I presume it will all come out. I, I doubt it very much, dude. It, uh, if, if I read that thing from the police yesterday, they're trying to uh, 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 put the lid on these conspiracy theories that a lot of this this is politically motivated and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I am taking it as that there that was a genuine complaint only made oh, yeah. at the start of March. For uh, for whatever reasons, I, I, and that they are now investigating it, and it's got politics. It's got nothing to do with this. That oh it's the no, same no, as Pat, 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 no, no, I disagree with you there. Politics does have to do with it. They they didn't. I don't say for a moment that people, uh, you know, uh, said that they had been abused, that they did that for political reason. Not at all. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying when they brought the complaint. That had political implications. That's why we're talking oh, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, well, sure. He's the leader of it. Of course, it has. But yeah. I, what I'm saying is that uh, I would say the cops, as far as they're concerned, the, uh, the, they didn't just investigate the same. So I don't, uh, did, we will never know what the the background of all this is until uh, the trial and it's over, uh-huh. and then I presume it'll all come out. But right uh-huh. now, I, I don't want to even go down because I don't know. I don't, I don't know the details. Neither do you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I find myself thinking about? Was uh. Kitty O'Shea. I was Parnell. Aye, a great, you know, a great man at the height of his powers, and suddenly he's failed by this. But that was at a time when Ireland was the Catholic Church ruled uh, totally. Uh, now it's you would think it should be different, but anyway, anyway, it's a, a an earthquake, and it'll take time to settle. The bottom line of it all is. It's up to the court, a judge, and a jury. All this speculation. Uh, Jeffrey uh, uh, um, Donaldson is innocent as we speak, uh, yeah. uh, whatever. And until he's fo- and until that's all the way around, a mm. court decides he's still innocent. So, uh, like, dude, what, uh, you know, whatever we decide here, say, uh, it's the politics that I am under us because I uh, don't know. Uh, you, and there do you. No, none of us. See all this bullshit that are, we don't know a damn who. Uh, the facts and everything, only yeah. that's all, all going to come out in court. Absolutely. Uh, hello, it is such a big political story. What's a big um, political story? Yeah, absolutely. And I cannot see it being in any way good, in any way good, except some of the unbelievable emerges to replace Jeffrey. Uh, I cannot see it being good for unionism. I mean, it is a serious. No, neither can I. No. I heard somebody talking about, you no, know, it'd be a good idea. I think it was Ben, it might not have been Ben from the newsletter, but. Uh, Somebody suggested well, right. that uh, you know it might be the occasion for unionism to form one party. Uh, yeah. uh, but they've been, they've, been that that for, they've been saying that for a long yeah. time. That's I never know, gonna happen. No party wants to give up their identity. They find it very, oh. very difficult to do that. What usually happens is they're they're overwhelmed by another one, as was the case yeah. with you know, the UUP and the DUP, as was the and case with the SDLP. And, and, and they're all subsumed, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Oh, well, uh, never a dull moment, let's say. Anyway, I, I sort of feel sorry for, for Jeffrey. His life must have just exploded when that uh, was launched at it, whether it deserved or not, we don't know. Okay, let's move to what, what was happening uh, yesterday, because yesterday was Easter Sunday, and in Dublin, uh, uh, they had the sort of march passed to commemorate the reading of the proclamation on... Um, uh, well, what day was it? Was it Easter Monday or Easter Sunday, nineteen sixteen? Easter Sunday, uh, uh, Easter Monday, nineteen sixteen, wasn't it? Uh, 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 and Matt, when I was in Dublin uh, in the sixties, the Easter, <laughs> the Easter consist of largely was uh, farming tractors <laughs> and stuff in the uh, yeah. going past. It's something else now, I'll tell you. A very stylish, very um, impressive ceremony. However. The thing that I find just a little bit galling is the proclamation is read out, and you know what these men were striving for was a, an Irish, an, an, an Ireland that was free, independent of Britain. They read that out uh, today or yesterday as if it was just written yesterday, with no sign of irony. Now, the fact of the matter is, 
the, if the, the, the signatories of the proclamation had known how much of Ireland was going to be uh, independent and free, they would have been appalled. I don't think yeah. they would have seen that as a victory. And I ask myself this, why do the people who uh, celebrate or mark the occasion of the proclamation, why do they never in any way act as if there's still a unfinished business? Yeah, I... Uh, Jude, uh, uh, there was a thing on RT last night. I didn't watch it because we went under my bed, but um, I, I tried to record it. I think uh, Ireland and a hundred stories or something. I can't. Uh, Eamon mm. McCann was on, by the way, uh -huh. and Eamon made the point. You know, um, uh, the, the southern state just wanted to forget about the north, uh, yeah. and I didn't want to upset Britain and so on. And uh, Jude, oh, there's yeah. a terrible lot of truth in that. Uh, and I've always remembered my predecessor, Frank Kern's famous one that Eddie McIntyre went down to see La Masse and I, uh, the great Republican who told him to go back up north and a plague in both your houses. Uh -huh. You know, that, that was how, you know, the South, and that was about in the 1960s. So you, do, you, you for, tend to forget that the South, like uh, I worked in RT and, I, and I've told you this story numerous times uh, about answering the phone and uh, and I'll quote the exact. Oh, you're another fucking northerner. No, that's <laughs> that's just you know. You know uh, they, there was a real anti-northern thing. Mm -hmm. I um, had a laugh, but they seem a lot of southerners seem to forget that they if they went into a house in Tyrone or in a skill, or they would find a wee woman with maybe the rosary beads up. No, the nineteen forties and fifties, it was exactly the same as they would have found in Leash or mm -hmm. Cavan or anywhere else. But the people, uh, people down south, seem to look up at the north. It's been a different tribe. We weren't. We were the same tribe. Well, you see, I in ways, Pat, I agree completely with you. In other ways, I have slight reservations. I do know for yeah. a fact that many southerners find northerners a bit abrasive and a bit belligerent, yeah. and that was even before before the uh, troubles. Um, yeah. Even before the civil rights march. Uh, you know, yeah. if you listen to our voices, our voices are harsher voices than those Speak as you for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, your accent. Yeah, anyway, carry like on. Your accent. You, you, you have a sweet voice, Pat, but your accent is shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, but, uh, are you uh, suggesting that? Are you are you suggesting? That our northern tones are much harsher than the soft, they, lulting tones of the south. Of course they are. Listen to them, for God's sake. Listen to a Cartman speak, or listen to Kerryman yeah. speak, and they, they mean they, they do make the words dance. Dublin to a lesser yeah. extent, uh, but even there, it's it's still quite musical. We tend to be a but. I mean, Paisley is sort of his voice was the extreme of that. That um, my dad, my dad had a great word for guldering. Exactly. You know, but, yeah. 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 You can yeah. have quiet gold ring and you can have loud gold ring. Uh, and I think yeah. to some extent, but anyway, I would agree with you there that there is uh, the, the people of the South, uh, that's part of their dislike of many Northerners is it reminds them that they've been trying to forget about the existence of the North for the last yeah, hundred absolutely. years. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I, um, I think that should be said. And I'm amazed that journalists don't at least occasionally advert to that fact. I watched that ceremony in the news last night, RTE, and, you know, you would have, if I was a foreigner, I would have sworn, oh, God, this country's got us independent. Well, that's really something. Uh, and again, mm. as I say, unfinished business. OK, let's mm. move to what happened. And I got an email from a, a guy from Donegal, Pat, yesterday. Yeah. And he said... Wasn't it great what the Northern teams did in Croke Park yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Oh, but he yes, forgot to Armaz. Armaz a Northern team too. Ah, that's right. And Tony Gall's a Northern team, for sure. Derry. I watched the tail end of the Derry match. It was brilliant. Oh. Uh, you know, I was, I, it was lovely to see Derry winning as well. Really oh, genuinely amazing. good. Amazing. Amazing. When you see, there's a, yeah. there's a story behind that, which I think is hilarious. You remember the reaction? It is um, Mickey Hart, of course, is now the, was the manager of Tyrone, and he's now the manager and of And he's now the manager of Derry, yeah. And yeah. Joe Brawley, whenever Mickey Hart was appointed, Joe Brawley went nuts. And he said... Absolutely. I What would you say? I, he I, said... I was like, what? Cosa Nostra, I, that, I, you know, backstabbing <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Go he ahead, said, sorry. He said... He said 
So at the appointment of Mickey Hart, he says, what in the actual fuck? Uh, uh, this is the uh, worst thing to happen to Derry since the plantation. <laughs> Slightly oh, over no. the top, I think we yeah. should invite Joe on and uh, just have a, have a word or two with him. Has he has he any thoughts on uh, that matter? Does uh, he want to give a revised version of them? I, uh, I'm, do you think, what do you think, was there a link between the manager and the dairy success or just that's the way things happen? You come a good team somewhere. No, I think, I think things have turned around. Uh, Derry's on the up. Jude, they have a lot of young players and it's been very good this last couple of years. What do you call him? Uh, uh, Rory Gallagher, you know, the guy who oh, yes. left under whatever, uh, under yeah. a wee bit of a cloud. Yeah. Uh, he, he, uh, he had kept it going. Uh, who's the original guy? I can't remember who there is, but anyway, things have been improving quite steadily this last three or four years. And they have now got a couple of really top class players. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that yesterday they, they gave Dublin a, a real run for their money and then won it and a penalty shoot it, you know, Jude, uh, at schools, they're now up there. Donegal, uh, the, um, Jim McGuinness is back in charge. Yes. Uh, and, and, second, the, no, second no, and the second coming. The second coming. Second coming. Aye, but you know something. A lot of the players yesterday I've never heard them before. So uh, you know, at one stage there was everybody in the Donegal team was nearly a household name. Now there's a whole, these are a lot of young people. Uh -huh. So he's bringing these young people in, and it's going to be very interesting. Oh, I, I, I would, I would, I would tend to. Well, I suppose as a Tyrone person, I would say that uh, Mickey Hart's influence in the Derry team was definitely a very positive factor. And likewise, I'd say that Jim McGuinness's uh, presence is a big factor in the uh, the Donegal team. Would you would you agree with Absolutely. that? Absolutely, Jim McGuinness. It was... It'll be the next year. So M Mickey is a winner. M Mickey, uh, when he was in charge, what the uh, um, Tyrone won three All Irelands, and three he All -Irelands. definitely had the uh, the the hoodoo or the voodoo sign over um, Kerry. Kerry, and that was a very good Kerry team. Mm -hmm. So that goes to prove how good Tyrone were. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's great. Uh, uh, good to see uh, uh, Doctor Consul. Can I can I change the subject totally? Yeah, okay. we, we, I meant to me I meant to mention it to you last week, but I forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some people who claim that October fifth, nineteen sixty eight, was the catalyst for the troubles, but I... you're frozen, Pat. So we'll we'll observe a, a minute's silence and see if you come back again. Yeah, you're back now. Yes, I'm back. frozen there. I'm yeah. back now. I, I, I noticed I'm, I'm freezing a couple of times. Anyway, Incidentally, Pat, I, I before, before, you go, before you go, there's just one thing. Remember you were saying about your Frank Curran going down south and being told, what was he told again? I, I was told a plague in both your houses uh, type thing. You know, I, uh, go back up north. Uh, my my uh, old history teacher, I strongly suspect, in St. Columns, was part of that delegation. Because I remember him telling us in the history class uh, that uh, he went down and he talked to De him and a, there was a, a group of them went down and talked to De Valeria, he said. And De Valeria told them, could they not, uh, you know, adopt the spirit of the men of 1798 and, uh, you know, form alliances with uh, Protestants? Uh, and, you know, this, uh, my history teacher said, ah, just showed you they hadn't a clue what was going on up north. Uh, Absolutely. Actually, yeah. theoretically, it was good advice, but I mean, given the state that was. Yeah, in exactly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry, Pat, I interrupted you there. Go ahead. No, no. Us. What, Jude? Right. Last week, uh, uh, Education Minister Connor Murphy said that he uh, wanted his department to prioritize the development of McGee College in Derry. That yeah. he wanted to see ten thousand students at McGee by twenty thirty, at the end of this decade. Yeah. And uh, Jude, uh, the fact that there's only 5,000 or less at McGee at the minute has showed how pathetic the development is. Mm. Right. Everybody was sort of applauding and saying, oh, isn't this wonderful? And the Derry University group came out with a statement, which I thought was absolutely uh, first class. They said, this is, wait a minute, this is uh, like crumbs from the table. And the Royal Irish Academy are, are apparently the experts. They are on, ex on third level institutions. And they're saying basically that... Uh, Oh, the University of Ulster ha has not delivered for Derry at all. Uh, and the Derry University Group has said we have had 60 years of arrogance, high-handedness, basically discrimination and so on. And th the fact that now that, uh, what is it, 83% of the students in Northern Ireland, third level students are in Belfast and 95% of the capital spend is in Belfast. Mm -hmm. Dude, you know, isn't isn't no that the reason that they're not there? Isn't that they haven't spent 
Uh, yeah, exactly, they, 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 you, you know, well, you know more about the Belfast. Uh, isn't there some big complex they opened there last year? Oh, they, 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 they transformed uh, the, the center of Belfast. Totally uh, and they, 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 they took they took stuff, including in court, uh, and there was a uh, Tipple Needle uh, chair and all that. They mm. took it from Derry and was given specifically to Derry because of John Hume, and they've mm. taken it to Belfast. Uh, so, in other words, to make to make uh, this new place fly, they have downgraded Derry again. Yeah, so yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and um, Garvin Downey and Conal McFeely are the uh, two main drivers of the Derry University group. Yeah. And the article they had, the opinion piece that they published last week, was basically saying, "We don't buy this." You know, uh, we don't uh, the bona fides of the Ulster University authorities. We just don't buy them that they will promise so much and promise they've had sixty years to promise delivery and have delivered nothing mm -hmm. or next to nothing. So uh -huh. it's, a, it's a very interesting one because. Uh, if you're thinking seriously about developing in the northwest, Derry and Donegal, Derry and Donegal, remember this, dude. Derry has the lowest disposable income in Northern Ireland. Donegal has the lowest disposable income in the south. So, if there was an independent university set up uh, and a corridor between Derry and Letterkenny, mm -hmm. and uh, attracting uh, American direct investment, particularly high tech stuff, we could turn this place around. But if we sit and wait. Another sixty years for Belfast to yeah. give us some crumbs. Where are we going? Oh, yeah, I do. Think, I think you'll be waiting. Tell me this: uh, is the sun like Connor Murphy says that uh, you say he says that by twenty thirty you should be double the numbers? Well, I mean, has he any plans for that to happen? I wonder. I don't know, dude. I really don't know. It's one thing to say it. That, 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 by, by the way, that's new, new, new decade, new deal. That was supposed to be this uh, ten thousand students. But dude, here's the thing: I chatted to uh, German and apparently. There's never been an audit of McGee. The, the, the authorities say there's 5,000 students, but nobody knows how many of them are full-time, how many of them are part-time, how many are doing night courses. Like, in, uh, we, we just have to take the authorities' word that there's 5,000 students there. They won't give details. And the spend on dairy has, has been pathetic. So the whole, there, it's a fairly major issue that get, keeps getting glossed over. It does. But why isn't the Southern, uh, your idea is that of a uh, university that would straddle the border. And I think that would be an yeah. amazingly good thing. It'd be very good politically. And it's a good thing academically. I think yeah. I know from experience that the, the people in the Ulster University turned their back on the South. You know, when you look for an external examiner, oh, oh England, you have to get them from England. Uh, and I say, well, yeah. what about somebody from Cork or somebody from Dublin? Uh, but they wouldn't understand the system. Oh. Anyway, uh, so why hasn't the southern government pressed hard for this? Because I haven't heard a peep out of any of them about a cross-border. Uh, well, uh, well, in fairness to this, in fact, in fact uh, our friend uh, Mr. Harris, um, Simon Harris, uh, the South have now given forty million to McGee, and they are apparently they're looking to put somebody on the board to ensure that the money that they give is spent the way they want it spent. Oh, and the university, you know, though there's there's total disenchantment uh, uh, with uh, the University of Ulster. You know, they're, they're as somebody described it, they're high handed, uh, and they haven't delivered. So you know, um, basically, I think what. Uh, the Denry University Group want is they want the Royal Irish Academy involved and to uh, for oversight to ensure when they say there's going to be delivery, there is delivery, not a whole lot of promises and nothing delivered. By the way, do you just to change so because we're, we're down to three minutes. Three minutes, yeah. Apparently, Rishi Sunak could lose a seat well, at okay. the next election. Aye, and aye. apparently the uh a Labour Party could could get as high as 468 seats. Now, considering the fact that the Tories had a ma massive majority of 80 seats with 365 the last mm -hmm. time, what do you make of all this? That it's... I, I, I'll come back to that in a, in a second. I still think that the Southern government missed a trick if they're serious about the idea of a cross-border university. Uh, yep. They should have been, uh, when they gave the money for the A5, when they gave the money for various things to the North, they should have said this quite loud and clearly, we really want to see a university develop. I think that's a terrible mistake. Uh, laziness, stupidity, don't know what. Okay, uh, your, uh, the story you wanted to move on to was Rishi Sunak losing his seat. Because uh, uh, we're going to do minutes. I probably will. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's at yeah. least possible. Incidentally, it's a beautiful place, that. Because I remember when I lived in England, uh, Richmond, and there's a Richmond in London, and there's a Richmond up in North Yorkshire, and it is stunningly gorgeous. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, of course, there are people. Though there are people who were members of the Labour Party. There's a journalist with the 
um, guardian called Owen Jones. And he yeah. says that he, his grandfather, his father, he, all of them were active members of the um, Labour Party. He says he's not going to vote for the Labour Party, a Labour candidate. He urges anybody else not to vote for the Labour Party. He says, for a start, they're going to get in and away. The more yeah. independents you can uh, bring together, the better, or put, put in Parliament, the better. And I tend to agree with him. I remember no less than Thatcher talking about yeah. the dangers of having a huge majority because it tends to split yeah. then. And the Labour Party is split right now in some areas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, what you call, by the way, it wasn't Thatcher. It was one of her ministers, which she, whom she sacked a couple of days later. You know, but I remember her talking about it, uh, saying, uh, oh, yes, I think we could live with a large majority. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, one of our ministers, I remember he he said a large majority has, uh, had dangers, uh, but and she sacked uh, them a couple I of days later. Anyway, but the, the, but I, no, you know the thing about it, I, I think Keir Starmer stands for nothing. I really... Yeah, yeah, I agree. You're stuck, Pat, you're stuck. But uh, I agree, and our time is just about up, I would say, whether we like it or not. So thanks, Pat. All the best, Jude. Okay, all the best, Pat. <laughs> all the best, Jude. See you there. Yeah. <laughs>